Hey folks, today's episode is sponsored by Easy, season two on Netflix. I'm in it. Easy is a Netflix original series by the great filmmaker Joe Swanberg. It follows the loosely connected lives of a diverse group of Chicagoans as they deal with the complications of modern love, sex, technology, and culture. There are eight standalone episodes with people like Dave Franco, Aubrey Plaza, Kiersey Clemens, and like I said, me. You can jump straight into any episode and find a real connection. Easy, season two, now streaming only on Netflix. We're also sponsored by Sonos and the amazing new Sonos One. Sonos One blends great sound with Amazon Alexa, the easy-to-use voice service for hands-free control of your music and more. Use your voice to play songs while you cook or take a shower. You can even manage your smart devices, all using a single Sonos speaker. And now for a limited time, Sonos is offering WTF listeners 10% off one order of $2,500 or less for any product on Sonos.com. Just use the promo code WTF10. That's Capital WTF one zero at Sonos dot com to receive this offer. All right, let's do a show. Lock the gate. <laughs> All right, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fuck nicks? What's happening? I'm Mark Marin. This is my podcast, WTF. Today on the show, I'd speak to director Darren Aronofsky. Uh, he directed recently Mother, but also Requiem for a Dream, the Noah movie, The Wrestler, Pi, some other movies. I'm a fan of his work. I, I enjoyed most of Mother. <laughs> He's going to kill me. What's going on? Well, um, Judge Roy Moore was defeated, uh, and that was a, a relief. I, I I I don't even know if if you're a Republican and you're hearing me say that and it aggravates you. Uh, my response to that is really, really, come on, come on. See, I mean, you know, be, you can be tribal if you wanna, but uh, let's not fill the house with complete fucking dangerous lunatics. It was just a relief. You know, things don't things are not great, and there's very little good news. And that was a a big phew. Whew. Wow. That's close. That was a good feeling. And uh, and then this morning or would have been yesterday morning, I woke up to the news that uh, I was nominated for a SAG Award, a Screen Actors Guild Award for a best male actor in a comedy. And uh, I got to be honest with you, folks. I didn't anticipate or expect any of this, man. And uh, I'm very excited. I'm flattered. I'm honored. I'm humbled by the recognition by my fellow actors. And as you know, I have trouble calling myself an actor. I have trouble calling myself an artist. I don't seem to have any trouble calling myself a stand-up comic. That seems to be, you know, it's sort of like, what do you do? I'm a plumber. I know what I do. I'm a plumber. But don't you also uh, sing at a nightclub? Yeah, but I'm not a singer. I'm a plumber. But uh, So I'm a stand-up comic. I'm a plumber. I'm a plumber of wit, but uh, but I have been acting obviously, and I have put a lot of work into it, and I'm th- I'm thrilled for the recognition. It's it's all gravy to me, folks. I don't I didn't I didn't expect any of this. I didn't expect, you know, I was looking down the barrel of of no expectation whatsoever, and just hoping to continue to earn a fucking living somehow without compromising myself too much to survive. Either that. Or, or suicide. That, those were my options, uh, a decade ago. And this is where we're at now. And I'm excited. I, you know, I'm just, and I seriously am just excited to be nominated. And there are some, you, you know, now I have to buy things. Now I have to, I have to get a tuxedo or, a, or some sort of formal attire, a black suit. I have to, uh, I have to go to these shows and, uh, and behave properly and not, you know, be resentful or, just be grateful that I'm part of such an amazing show and there's such an amazing cast. The ensemble was uh, nominated for a uh, for the uh, for the SAG Awards as well. Allison Bree nominated as well. This is a great show, great writing, great cast. The stunt people, they were nominated. They do amazing work. It's it's just a it's just a thrill to be part of something so uh, so well received, and I couldn't have anticipated that. I really. Didn't anticipate any. I'm not living the life I thought I would live. The life I thought I would live uh, was fairly diminishing. And there is still part of me, deep, not that deep inside of me. Actually, it's very close to the surface that when something good happens, I take it in. I'm like, wow, that's great. I didn't think this would happen. And then it goes right to something bad's going to happen. 
Something's coming down the pike. Well, you know what? It's coming down the pike for everyone. Yeah. Either slowly or quickly, but you know, you don't really know. You don't know what it is or, or yeah, if it's an event, but yeah, you know, it's all, it's coming down the, it's coming down the pike for all of us. So, uh, you know, in the, it, that is in the big picture. There is an end to this, but, uh, in the micro, whatever. I'm not going to read so much into it. I'm thrilled. Thank you, Screen Actors Guild. Thank you, uh, uh, Genji Cohen, Liz Flayhive, and Carly Mensch. And thank you to all the amazing actresses, uh, that I'm surrounded with. Chris Lowell, uh, actor. It just, it, all, the whole thing. The writers. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's all them. It, you know, it doesn't happen without them. None of it happens without them. I just show up and, uh, put on my funny glasses and my Sam pants. Put on your Sam pants, Marin. And that's what happens. I put on the Sam pants and the glasses. Get the hair blown out. I'm in. We're sponsored today by Casper, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products so you can get an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. I've been telling you about Casper for a while, ever since I got one years ago. That was the original Casper. But now there are three Casper mattress models, the original, the Wave, and the Essential. All of them are perfectly designed to soothe and cradle your natural geometry like an all-night hug. Ah. Not to mention the breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night. And how about the box? Can we talk about the box for a second? I loved opening the Casper box. That was an event in itself. You get this box delivered right to your door, and you're like, what's in there? A rug? A a footstool? A lamp? No way it can be a mattress. Then you open it up, and boom, a mattress breathes to life. I love it. I love it. Plus, free shipping and returns in the U.S. and Canada, and you get a 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial. Start sleeping ahead of the curve with Casper. Get 50 bucks toward any mattress purchased by visiting casper.com slash WTF and using WTF at checkout. That's casper.com slash WTF, offer code WTF for $50 off your mattress purchase. Terms and conditions apply. Dig it. Can you dig it? Doug. So, yes. What else is happening? What else is happening is that my cats, Monkey, LaFonda, and Buster, are are taking to the new house pretty well. It seems to be more than they uh, anticipated. Uh, that's something we, we share. I, I don't think me or my old cats uh, really assumed that we would ever get out of this house, the cat ranch, which is where I'm broadcasting from now in the hills of Highland Park. I think that we all assumed that this was it for all of us. And I think we're having the same reaction to the new house is that they were freaked out for a few days, but now they seem more relaxed. They seem like they're all hanging out together. Buster's hanging out with the other two. Uh, but the other two seem like, all right, this is it. We did it. It's, this is real retirement. Uh, I feel like that my cats after, uh, after being rescued from a dumpster or from an alley, from a garbagey alley in Astoria, Queens, saved from the cold back in 2004, trapped and brought into a house my apartment not a house with several other their sisters and brothers just in a fucking clusterfuck shit show of feral cats in a in a in a in a two bedroom apartment in Astoria they managed to to stay with me stay with me through thick and thin through many relationships through a lot of yelling through a lot of sadness through a lot of things monkey even went back to new york with me for a little while he's made the trip twice these old cats are somewhere around 13, 14 years old, and they have they have succeeded. No matter what happens to me, my cats, Monkey and LaFonda, have made it. They are successful cats, and they, I, they are acting like it. They are sort of like, we're good. Everything's fine. We're not freaking out about nothing right now. You, got, you do what you got to do, Mark. Fix the house up, whatever. We're good. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate you uh, facilitating this, but you're no longer necessary to us. Uh, so do what you got to do. Buster, on the other hand, it's all new to him, and he's still out of his mind. But he started fetching again yesterday, and he seems to be a little more adventurous than the other two. Hey, if you've been thinking about your home security, there's no better time to get it than right now. You've heard me talk about Simply Safe Home Security, the best protection 
period. And it's the end of the year. You might be traveling for the holidays. So Simply Safe has put together a great home security package for WTF listeners, and it's huge. It's all you need to protect your home, your valuables, and your loved ones. It's got entry sensors, motion sensors, glass break sensors. You got a top notch siren, an extra indoor keypad. My producer Brendan set this exact system up at his home, and he loves it. And right now, for the holidays, Simply Safe is giving you a great offer for it. Get two hundred dollars off this package. Complete protection for your home. Simply Safe is already the best value in home security. There is no contracts, no commitments. But right now, you get two hundred dollars off this great security package. Go to simplysafewtf.com and click on the Shop Now button. This is possibly the best home security deal you'll ever see. Save two hundred bucks at Simply Safe WTF. Dot com. S-I-M-P-L-I-S-A-F-E-W-T-F dot com. It'll also go there if you use a Y at the end of simply. Protect yourself. I, I added that tag. So, my lips are chapped. My skin is dry from makeup. Okay. So, I need to, before I bring Darren on, uh, I want to say that this was the day that Buster came back. You hear live... Not live, but you will hear live on tape the return of Buster. As some of you who listen to the show regularly know, he disappeared for a few days, and he he came back during this interview. Uh, Mother, Aronofsky's new movie is now available on digital HD and comes out on Blu-ray and DVD on December 19th. This is me and Darren Aronofsky. <laughs> So now, now that I see you, I know we did meet a million years ago. I was always sort of uh, uh, not not mad, but like I knew I knew you liked comics. I knew you used Todd a couple times, so there was a, an element of uh, you know I don't understand what what do I got to do to to get Darren Aronofsky to give me like two lines in a weirdo movie. <laughs> I used to go see you down on Lower East Side, right on uh, on Ludlow Street. You because you're friends with Amy. Amy, yeah, old friend, and she used to. What was the name of that night? It was like a Tuesday night. Eating it. No. Monday night. No, no, it wasn't eating it. I thought it was Tuesday. Michael Portnoy was always there. You remember that guy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the yeah the guy who uh, soy bomb the guy so, who yeah, exactly emptied re- his Prozac pill container and <laughs> stuck his dick in it. Sure, <laughs> <Do you> re- <laughs> remember. <laughs> Him taking all us out onto house in one night and just streaking across house and as a performance. So yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty impressive. Sure, I, I guess you know that that type of performance I think you know has its moment and yeah. it's necessary. Someone be out there on the wire doing that. Exactly. I don't know if there's a, a future in it. <laughs> well, I actually only almost gave him a part. I was trying to Great. give him Are a couple. Trying to make yeah. me feel better. Exactly. <laughs> in what? Uh, in mother, actually, I, I re- he was putting on a little show with his girlfriend. You know, he's, he moved, he's like a dancer and he's. Oh, so Portnoy's still at it? He does some weird stuff. He did like a weird game show, like. Uh, it was an installation in a space, and you walked in, and he was. It was very intense. I always liked the guy. You know, he was always odd, and you know, like I said, there, there, there is that element in, in that is necessary theatrically. Yeah. Yes. To, someone's got to hold that that space. Yes, I think. I, I like performance art. Yeah, I think it's interesting. It, no, definitely, it's, yeah. it's provocative. And like, yeah. uh, so what? You, what part was you going to give him, mother? Oh, I don't there's know. Like five, I would have like, stuck him in some freaky doing something crazy. Oh, oh like the, yeah, the, in the, the corner. End. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I gotta be, I, I, I well, gotta... It would have been a shout out to you and all my comedian friends. Oh, that, that would have been <laughs> great. And what happened? Why didn't you? I think we were shooting in Montreal and we couldn't get him a work visa. So uh, tell me about it because like, you know, they sent me a screener yesterday. Okay. Did so you I, watch it? No, I got through most of it. Okay. But I'm, I'm still waiting the end. Oh, the end's the whole thing. Well, well fuck, Darren. <laughs> Darren, I, you know, I, like I'm just trying to be honest with you. Feel free. And, you know, like, I, I'm in, but I didn't finish it. That's all. all. Right. That's fine. So but don't... The, uh, we can't really talk about... It. The end is the best part. Well, then, but it's probably better for a lot of people that we don't talk about the end. There you go. Right? There you go. The uh, spoiler thing. Yeah. There but let me, let me... Like, you know, I'm in it. I'm, I'm, I, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is great. Fantastic. J- j- great. And, right. and, like, it's so crisp. What are you doing with the color? What's going on there? How'd you, how'd, how'd you jack that up like that? Oh, it's shot on film. So maybe that's why it looks a little different. Maybe that's what you're responding oh, to. Man. We shot on 16 millimeter, old school. 16? Yeah, like the size of a postage stamp. So that's how it. you got all the... So you didn't have a guy on a steady cam. You could hold it. He was holding the camera the whole time, yes. <laughs> like old school holding old, it. Old original, yeah. We, no. we reduced everything. All everything. right, so now like it's obviously means something that I'm yeah. not you know fully informed of yet. Yes, you'll get it when you get to the end. God damn it, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You, you, if you're mad at me, you can say it. No. Say, if you're disappointed, you say it. I'm, I'm watching it. I'm happy to be here. 
All right. I, I've been a fan I, since what is it, the nineties? Well, I freaky. appreciate that, but just tell me, tell me a couple things about what compels that. Like you're, you're using a form because you've done it before, fantasy yeah. and horror, right? Yeah, yeah a couple sure. of times in your career. Yeah. Now the, there, there's an intention to that. Yeah. What does that afford you? Well, I think it if it lets you start in reality. And then leave it. Like uh, one of the great things that I th- I like about film yeah. is um, when it exits reality and it takes the audience with them. Because you you do that in sections in your other movies. Yeah, yeah. You, you maintain the reality. Yes, right. I, I, and I, you know, Wrestler was very very real. That was very straight naturalistic, up. Yeah, straight you know? up. But Requiem for a Dream, of course, is many parts that sort of drift off into this feverish There's, place. There is like one scene in that that I can never get out of my head. Sorry, it's okay, but it's probably not the one you think. Uh, it's really just the of of Jennifer Connelly dancing, you know, in that scene, you know, where or, or I don't remember if she was dancing, but like she was high and she had to, yeah. where she was being paid, basically a prostitution yes. scene. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Where she hardcore. well, it was hardcore because I, I, you know, I need her to to be in a different space, yeah. Jennifer Connelly. <laughs> <laughs> in my heart, in my mind, I need Jennifer. You soiled her. You made you made a mess out of Jennifer. Yikes. Sorry. It's okay. I, I make a mess out of all my actors. Yeah, she's a great actress, and it was yeah. a great movie. And like, I think you really did a, a, an honor to, to Hubert's uh, business there. Yes. Yeah. Have you met him? Did no, you I missed him. him. I, I, I have friends who met him. You know, he's sort of an oracle in, yeah. the, in the recovery racket. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. and there are a lot of cats who, who I, you know, I've dealt with the, the, uh, the second generation of the people that he was that you know, guiding through. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was. He was very much a bodhivita. He, like, led people to the light. That's why Ellen Burstyn called him. You know, not the Buddha, but the person that leads you to the Buddha. Yeah, man. He was, like, in... in really in, helped a lot of people. Sort of old school, kind of post-beatnik New York drug shit. Yeah. And uh, just a beautiful guy. So getting back to fantasy and getting back to horror and getting yeah. back to leaving the reality... Frame. Yeah. I won't get. We'll get back to Hubert, but like, so that 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 allows you to start in reality and leave reality. Yeah. But it seems like with with the with the new movie with Mother, there was a very well articulated intention. You had yeah. something set up, and it wasn't like Black Swan, where you know shit gets weird, but you know, you know, she's very hard on herself, and it's disastrous. Right. But I guess my question to you yeah. is, you know, as a director and as somebody who's handled the 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 uh, who's been at the mast of you know small films and huge films, yeah. And and this is something this is something that came out of your mind and your heart. Yes. Did you have the metaphor? It is it is it a, did you know what you were trying to represent and what it meant? Absolutely. So you do that. Yeah. You're not, you're not one of these directors who's sort of like, hey, make of it what you will. No, no. Well, I've talked a bit about it on the record what we were going for, but it's a lot of things. And what's been the most interesting about this film and this trip is that, yeah. is all the different interpretations. And there's actually a line that comes up that um, the poet says that uh, Bardem uh, Javier Bardem yeah. says where he says everyone understands it in a different way. And he's talking about his poem, but yeah. it's, it's actually very similar to the film. So, so that was your intention. Well, my intention was for people to get like one of three <laughs> ideas out of it. Okay, and all three have come out. Yeah. Well, yeah. tell me what they are. Well, some people see an environmental metaphor. Uh-huh. Um, where the home kind of represents our home here, and, oh, and, and, and that's something you're you know aligned with, right? Did you did definitely. you did you put a little that in there? Oh yeah, of course. Okay, that's a big part of it. There's also a, a, a marriage gone wrong, falling apart. Well, that's right. The there, there's of there's that. the menace. It, they had the menace of uh, Virginia Woolf. Sure. For, yeah. for like you know an hour, it's just sort of like oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd almost like to see that cast do Virginia Woolf. <laughs> it would be great. It would be great. <laughs> it would yeah, be yeah, great, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. So marriage, um, yeah, yeah. And then there's sort of this biblical thing going through, which you might have started to sense. I don't know if you did. The uh, yeah, which, which biblical thing? You you know more uh, about the Bible than me. <laughs> well, Adam and Eve, and you, okay, you just met Cain, and you just sure. met Abel, right? Okay. You did. Oh, Cain showing up. Okay, yeah, sure. Those great old stories. Yeah, the great old stories. Yeah. So it's all happening in front of this woman, and the and the and the crystal breaks, and that that's a big problem. Yeah, it's a big mystical problem. It's yeah. a f- spiritual problem. Yeah. it's a creativity problem. Yeah, hanging your hopes on on some sort of uh, a pennant, not always a great idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not not always a great idea. <laughs> but but so all those things those layers were intended but yet you knew that it would be like it would confound and confuse and aggravate and and uh in in live in audiences you knew that that oh yeah very much we knew we weren't making a crowd pleaser you know we <laughs> always were like this is punk 
this is in your face um but i think it came out of a, a place of like rage that i was having and it was on all those levels relationship biblical and environmental yeah in the opposite direction <laughs> oh yeah well actually environmental personal and biblical uh-huh yeah, in that order but it takes a tremendous amount of courage to to occupy th that space for that long and bring people with you that they, they got to trust this vision yeah. so how do you you know, you know necessarily because i mentioned that uh, the actors read the script and none of them were like this makes perfect sense to me well i think um there was a lot of passion from the beginning from all the actors. They were like, this is great. This is exciting. Let's explore. Um, Jennifer got it right away. Uh, Javier, you know, had to figure out how to play that character. And as you see, it's a very complicated character. Yeah. It, was a, it was a tight, tight rope to play this place between love and arrogance and forgetting you know, being kind of uh, thoughtless at times. So it's he's a, he, play. so he actually is a representative of because I notice a lot on the relationship level and also on that that this deference to the genius and and mm -hmm. you know you know creativity, the volatility of creativity, the the fraud, the vanity, the the you, you know the, the 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 sort of facade of it too. Yeah, but I think it's that's a little bit of um, that's a little bit to the side. Yeah. There's something, he's really representing something bigger. Yeah. I don't want to give it away to you or to the audience. Uh, so, okay, it's good. all so, there. I mean, so, and you put it together, but he, it's something much, much bigger. Uh huh. And how did you direct? Cause uh, Jennifer was, uh, was pretty astounding. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you're right out of the gate because, you know, she doesn't know what the fuck's going on. We don't know what the fuck is going on, but she's so visceral. And so, like, you know, her, her emotions and her reactions are, you know, they come right through the screen. They're, they're tangibly human. Yeah. And uh, and she knew exactly what she was going to do to play that. Well, I think we discovered it. Yeah. And uh, she actually, you know, we spent three months in rehearsal on it yeah. and uh, went through the whole thing many, many times. And she talks about how she didn't actually find the character till the first day, which is true. I saw it happen. Uh, and it was because when we got to set, we were st still struggling with what was going to be on her feet. And then we decided for her to go barefoot. Yeah. The second she walked through the set barefoot, it kind of connected and clicked for her. And yeah. this character came out. But I don't know if I've ever seen such a raw talent. Like I've, um, she's, first of all, she's autodidact. She's taught herself how to act. Uh huh. I remember seeing him in that, seeing her in that hillbilly movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Winter's Bomb. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. And it's just whatever she was then, 17, just incredible natural talent. Yeah, yeah. It was like, well, what the fuck is this? An incredible technical actor, too. So I would give her five, six notes. I, I And I usually, when with most actors, you give them two, three notes. They yeah. can maybe handle it. Yeah. She'd you know, be able to do five, six, seven notes, and she'd hit them all. Just oh, bang them out. Boom, so boom, she just boom. And technical, not just emotional cha changes, but like, oh, can you be another inch this way or that way? And uh -huh. you know, it was a pretty... It was like kind of, you know, she's in Michael Jordan in high school type of thing. Well, you know, you I know? see how like, you know, David O. Russell uses her, too. Yeah. I mean, like, you, you know, I, I don't know what he's like, but but he obviously has a similar appreciation. Yeah. For yeah. for using whatever that energy is. Well, I think he just took her and let her shine. Like if you look at her in Silver Linings, that's very I much watch that like every time it's on. Oh, do you? Yeah. And and, and I think also elements of joy. I what, like that movie. What I'm proud of in this movie is that it's not Jen. And that was the first thing. She She's really not herself. It's not this boisterous, strong right. female presence. Right. She's on the back foot. She's very quiet. She yeah. has a different voice. And, and I, I think she's still compelling. Oh, no doubt. Which to me is like what you look for in actors, like a Meryl Streep that can disappear into all these different roles. And I think Jen has just started that journey. You think so? Absolutely. I think she can do anything. I mean, this was the opposite of anything she's done before, this performance, and she, I think she's convincing through the whole film. Yeah, I think you're right. It's been the first time where, you, where she's not really in charge. Yeah. Right. Which is uh, hard for her. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> you know, I, and like I've seen her with accents and stuff, but, you know, yeah. still it's like there's a, there's a, you know, there's a, a brassiness to it and, there, yes. you know, swagger. And also a, you know, this kind of goofy charm that she has. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Kind of like Lucille Ball. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, she could do that, right? Which I just started rewatching with my son, and he loves it. Which well, is, the, it's also Lucy? incredibly sexist. It's incredibly. Yeah. Oh yeah, this, she's like but Mrs. She, Ricky Ricardo. You forget these things that you grew up with. But you, I'd like to remember her as as usually 
be, but she is usually this. The, the he's the straight one. Yes. And, and oh, she's also Ethel, absolutely the lead. Yeah. He, he, right, but like she's always screwing things up. Yes. Exactly. Oh, Ricky. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just great stuff, though. Yeah. Are you gonna? Maybe you should do a Lucille Ball movie. Oh, good idea. All right. So that it's 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 very exciting. I'm very impressed with the uh, with the the your capacity to. To manage these things, you seem like a a, a a grounded sort of nice guy. Thank you. Uh, but it's it seems like a, a quite an ordeal to make the type of movies you make, specifically this new one and fucking Noah. That was a big one. What 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 what, what, what possessed you? <laughs> it made a lot of money in the world. It made a lot of money. It did well. Uh, because that was that came from you, right? Yeah. That was my idea. It wasn't I think a lot of like my fans didn't see it because they thought I was like selling out and it was completely my movie. It was my passion. I've been wanting to make it for about twenty years. Your fans from The Wrestler, Requiem yeah. for a Dream, Pi, yeah. Black, uh, Black Swan. Swan. Yeah. And the, the other fountain, one. the fountain, the fountain, right? I never saw that one, right? I didn't see that one. That's a good one. I'm gonna watch it, you know. Okay, but I mean, yeah. I saw enough to be able to have a conversation with you. You're doing good. <laughs> but but now because like Pi yeah. had you know Kabbalistic. You know, uh, num- numerology, numerology, right. mathematics, yeah. the you know, sacred the, geometry. Right, the the, the yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, answer. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, it's, it's there. It's right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so that's biblical. It's Jewish. Yeah, right. A so Noah, one of the great Jews, pre pre Jew, pre Jew. He's okay. pre Abraham. Oh, so, so the okay. Jews didn't exist yet. <laughs> He's in the Jewish book, though. Yes, yeah, yeah Old Testament. So, right. So pre Abraham, so pre Abraham. So yeah, that's I just think- a guy with a boat. Who talked to God, the yes. God of the Jews, Yahweh, but also yeah. significant but other before he was the God of the Jews, right? Yeah. Right, just he was, he was just, just a God, a God. Yeah, right? At that just, point, just the <laughs> he God. hadn't chosen the one. He hadn't made the choice yet. But he's in other, like, is he? He's also in other mythologies, right? Noah, he's not only in the Old I Testament. Mean, you know, there's uh, no, he's he's just in the Old Testament, but there are other flood stories. There's tons of flood stories. There's the Gilgamesh, sure. which is the oldest uh, right. mythology out there, has a flood story. So. You know, there's a lot of different sources. But are you are you fascinated with that with mythology? I'm a storyteller. You know, I get and it. That's my religion is yeah. stories. And yeah. For me, um, I there's some reason why these stories keep getting told because there's a lot of power to them. There's a lot of interesting elements to them. There's a lot of mystical, cool ideas that can reflect back. And I'm all about thinking about those stories and how what they mean for us today. Okay. So you wanted to tell the story of Noah. Yeah. Why? Well, he's the first environmentalist. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, he was there. Oh, your cat. Did you hear something? I did. I heard a cat. Mark's going to the door Buster? to check for the cat. Buster? Buster? He's searching for the cat outside. Buster? Buster? Hey, Buster? Buster? God damn it. Buster? No luck? been gone for two days it's driving me nuts I, I, I hope he comes back you never know out here so the first environmentalist yeah we'll keep an ear out well, he usually he's usually like eh, it's high i heard it i think something i yeah, heard yeah. something yeah, i don't I, know I, I definitely heard what you heard yeah he saved the animals two by two and i just thought the idea of this impending doom this apocalypse that the world was yeah. filled with man's evil and god decided to restart it again it's actually very timely yeah that's for sure yeah well so <laughs> So you you thought it would be uh, uh, it's a, a commentary. A, it's about it's about faith in humanity. A clarion it, call is that the word that I want? I don't know what does clarion call mean. I don't know. Can we look it up? Yeah, I sure. feel like I used it right, but this is ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> but you want you so you you told it for the reasons that it was uh, it was written. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. Way, you told I mean, the story again. Different people would say it has different a strongly meaning. expressed demand or request for action. Clarion. Clarion call. As in two words. Yes. Okay. Well, there you go. It yes. was that. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the last film. Yeah. I think it's like about, uh, I don't know, the last couple have been about screaming about what's going on. It's a very frustrating That's time. That's pre-Trump. Uh, Both times. Well, this one, Mother was right. Mother was written the eighth year of Obama and comes out the first year of Trump. Right. Um, so that's interesting how, how things change and, you know. But I think actually it, so on, it's just interesting how interpretations have so changed. So you you see on some level that you, you know in your mind these those both operate as environmental uh, warnings. I think that there's elements of that in both films. Buster, Buster. <laughs> Sorry, it's very exciting. <laughs> no, it's very. It would be great if he comes back. Oh, 
Yeah. Mars going to the Buster. door again. Buster. Oh, you fucking raccoon. It's a raccoon. Two of them. Oh, do they are they in do they endanger cats? No. Okay, good. Oh, there's a dog. So big <laughs> raccoons. They're surprisingly big. <laughs> you, have you seen you've seen them? Uh not in LA. Oh, they're here. Yeah. But I like, be- you know, when you do see them, you know, they just are like, where are they during the day? Yeah, Some yeah. of them are fucking huge. Amazing. Amazing. They're, they're, and they have hands. They did. Have you ever seen a possum? Yeah, they, they got them too. There's one of those around. I, know, I never saw one until I got into college and I woke up. I saw it outside the store 24 and I called all my friends. Store 24. Out of bed. Yeah. Uh-huh. Called them all out of bed. Made them come see this. And they're like, it's a I, possum. I, was, I thought it was the king of rats. I was like, the king of rats is outside store 24. <laughs> I made everyone go and they just made uh, fun of me for a long time. There's one hanging out now. Usually I get possums, raccoons, uh, skunks. Wow. Uh, light on skunks lately. Well, that's good. There are a couple of raccoons around. They hang out, but possums come and go. But there's a, there's a large possum around right now. Coyotes. Yeah, that's what the problem with the cats is. Uh, I'm sorry. All right, so environmental clarion yeah. calls. Yes. So where did you grow up? I grew up in South Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, and what, what near Coney Island, Manhattan Beach? Oh, really? Yeah. Were you are, are your parents Russian? No, I, I was there before the Russian. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Russians came in in the eighties. Uh, my grandparents came to America. So, so you, you you were in the same place your grandparents lived at, or, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. you grew up with them in your life. You definitely, yeah. All all three out of four. Yeah, yeah. That's good, right? For how long did they were they around? Grandma Grandma Betty made it all the way through Requiem for a Dream. No kidding. Yeah, the, did you the, take the, her to the premiere? I don't know if she made it that far. She uh, The film's dedicated to her, so she passed. But I remember her being on set the night that um, Marlon uh, gets shot at in the back of the limo and goes running down the street with the blood guts, and she yeah. was just looking at me, shaking her head. Like, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. This what is not you... a career. Yeah, you should be a doctor. <laughs> Where'd they come from? Where'd she come from? She's from Lithuania. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And, well, that's sweet, you know, that they were all there. How many siblings do you have? I've got uh, an older sister, Patty. Yeah. Is she in the arts? She's a producer for CBS News. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And and your folks did what? Both public school teachers. I don't know why I'm I'm talking Jew now. It's all right. I'm decided. (laughs) I've shifted. My dad dad was a teacher at Bushwick High when Bushwick was rough. Educators. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And my mom uh, taught fourth grade in uh, on Neck Road. Were they, they, uh, you know, did they encourage... You to to what to read? Was there it was it an intellectual household? Was it Not a really. pro- progressive household? Was it a a, a communist household? Was no. it a democratic household? Democratic, I'd say. Yeah. Um, you know, and definitely like you had to do your homework. Uh huh. You know? the they were yeah. teachers. I mean, they so were teachers exactly. So yeah. it they th- that was helpful. You know, because it made sure there was a seriousness about your homework. If you did your homework, you were fine. But so, you were a good student. I was a fine student. Yeah, but, but what were you interested at the time? Like, I mean, how do you end I up? I mean, you're talking about elementary school. When you got old enough to have interests, what yeah. you know, what was driving you? I was pretty well rounded. I, I I definitely was good in math and science, and I was leaning that way until I got to college. And um, my roommate in college, freshman year, was a math major, and his math book had no numbers in it. It was all like Greek symbols. Yeah, and I was like, okay, that's not for me. Um, and so I leaned into what, the. <laughs> what was that? What was it? I, I don't, it was like sigmas and pies yeah. and all that stuff. So and it was high just, level shit. It was high level. What college shit. was that? At Harvard. So you got into Harvard. I did. And you know, what was what do you got to know when you get in there? Do you, do you have to enter with some interest? I mean, what were you like? I had no study? idea. I had no idea. I had no idea. I, I, public school education, which is like I barely knew how to write. So I then mean, the the Mac. Came out with uh, whatever the, uh, the whatever first MacBook, Mac. the first yeah. Mac, whatever they called it. Wasn't it wasn't the book; it was, it the, was the yeah the one twenty seven. Yeah, the one the box. And the spell check. Yeah, saved my. I, I didn't know how to spell there and there. You got but, into Harvard. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't really know how to do that. So, so you're there on the quad. You're there at Harvard. You're eating yeah. burgers at the Tasty. <laughs> Did you eat <laughs> the, there? The ta- of course. Yeah. The ta- ah, that's good. Hey, yeah. you know, you're from Boston. I lived in Somerville. Oh, very nice. I, I mean, I went to, you know, after I went to college at Boston University, oh, and then nice. I came out here for a year, and then I went back, and I started my comedy career in 88. So I was there on and off for from 81 to 89, and I was going up there to work. So. That's great. And I used to work at the Coffee Connection in the garage. Very nice. Sure. It was before middle, Starbucks. Middle and, East. What, Middle was East. It, Rat Skeller? Rat Skeller in oh, Kenmore. That was great. That's all gone. Middle East is still there. The I think. Channel. Remember the sure, Channel? Channel down in uh, the Park, reggae place. Sauce. 
Well, yeah, they had a lot of different bands there. The World channel music, down on the yeah. wharf. Yeah, exactly. Sure, I saw James Brown, which is all developed there. now with like condos, right, or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I rarely go back, but so you're there. You're that. That's a that's pretty rare air for a kid from Brooklyn. Absolutely, that uh, was weird. It was weird. I was uh, I was a long, long coats. <laughs> I didn't quite understand what was going on for a while. And yeah, it's just definitely and the, like a deer in headlights. Just not. I just never had an experience like that. Up yeah, to that with point. the aristocracy. Yeah, I mean, there's all types of kids to be sure. fair. But yeah. uh, and and you know, look, a lot of the people I still work with are were college roommates. My my writing and producing partner Ari I'm, was was a roommate. The guy who does my VFX was a roommate. So, you know, Sean Gallette, who yeah. starred in Pi, was a good friend. So, you know, he was at that, Harvard? Yeah. But that, that, that was what was great. You met a lot of people that. Um, but they didn't have a film program, did they? Not barely. They had like 20 film students. So, what did you Did you graduate from Harvard? Yeah. So, what did you end up studying? I graduated not. I basically became a film major, but I didn't graduate with a film degree because I was a little embarrassed to go back to the parents in Brooklyn and say, I want an arts and crafts degree <laughs> yeah, at Harvard. And you're paying this amount of money for me to go. <laughs> so, you know, I, I just was too embarrassed. So, so I wait. took all art class, like I took drawing, but I didn't really tell them. And it was the only place where I got good grades. The rest, I was a B minus student. The only A I ever got was in film. Wait, so wait, so what did you tell them you did? I mean, didn't they see the paperwork? Like, what did you oh, get no, into? They paid them. Uh, they were just glad I was getting through it. And oh. uh, you know, I you didn't placate them with like science or anything. I didn't do much science. No, mm. I, I don't think I did one science class that you had to take. Yeah, and, but even though I had a lot of science background, so know. what do you think ultimately? Because the Harvard education they do with like the it's there's a core curriculum, right? That yeah, yeah. that that exactly. goes throughout the four years. Yeah. yeah. That you you take to get the 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 decent, well rounded liberal arts education. This is before they sold it out. But I'll tell you that you was, hear the cat. I, hello, Buster. 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 Fuck him. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the core was great. Yeah. I actually many of the things I learned in the core are things that have influenced me uh, in my work. For now. instance. Well, there was a class on. Uh, they called it Heroes for Zeros, which was like uh, basically. Um, jo uh, Joseph Campbell's like sure the mythology, the mythology the hero of a thousand faces, which I took for an easy class, and I actually that learned sense. that structure. Uh -huh. uh, so I you learned I took Bible first so time, which was like you just read the Bible, the hermeneutic and code. Yeah, yeah. The, so, so like uh, just different things have, yeah. have shown up in the work. So I think I actually at the time it was a pain in the ass, but I actually think it it did what it did. It actually well rounded gave me a well, lot. Those of are the ideas. ones, right? Yeah. The weird yeah, those are the ones that are going to inform more than anything else. Things that you know, you're not the don't story. think you're interested in. Yeah, the the sort of never ending story, the the never eternal uh, uh, narratives. Yes, yes, that that are told again and again and again. So did Obama sit in this? He chair? sat right in that chair. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you like oh, it? Love it. It's very comfy. Good. So that's what did it, huh? And so, it, but the film class is available. So you're going to the Brattle Theater. You're seeing that yes. shit, right? There was a. It was basically a documentary film department. And uh, we did a lot of docs, but they gave you the cameras. You loaded the cameras. You cut the film on steam bags. Oh, it was practical it was old school. stuff, right? Yeah, it was okay. Old school. I so still that, have scars from. With the oh, that's with interesting. The so they 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 kept it. Uh, they it, didn't keep it. It was pre digital. No, but oh, right. But I mean, uh, it was for, it was probably in the journalism department. No, no, it was in the okay. arts department. Okay. They, they had a nice arts. Why department. Why they decide on documentary? If that was what that's what they offered film wise. No, one of the big professors is a famous uh, person in that world. Who? Uh, Ross McElvey, he uh -huh. did Sherman's sure. March. Sure, I remember yeah. Sherman's March. So Great. he's kind of the godfather of the department, and then uh, these two guys on the at him at the time, Alfred Gazzetti and Rob Moss, kind of continued. That so tradition. Doc is art. Doc is Doc is uh, Doc. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't as journalism. It was more as they were very much into the personal Doc, right? The Doc where you're aware of of the filmmaker, just like Michael Moore does now, yeah. and it's become very popular. Sure, the guy, the guy who ate the hamburgers. All yes, the time. Morgan Sproul. Yeah, but but uh, but but Sherman's March was one of the first that did that. Exactly, I and remember then, that movie. Yeah, exactly. And he did another one. He's done a few. Yeah, he's very, he's very talented, but he's very referential to himself. Sure, uh, that that's well, that makes it charming and funny. Yeah, I guess so. And I also, mean, some and, some docs don't. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, you, you know, like the guy who made the one about the about Durst, the killer. 
Oh, that was great. It was great, but like, I didn't need him in it. Oh, <laughs> he's a friend. <laughs> but I thought he did a good, you know, yeah, it's true, but he, he was No, he did great. a good job, he but every time job. he was in, it's sort of like, no, no. <laughs> great. Great end, though. Oh, yeah. What yeah. A, oh, a, yeah. A, a, no, that was great. I, I, like, great piece. I like good docs. I think yeah. he's good. I, I'm not sure. But he also did Capturing the Freemans. Which, which I like a lot. No, I, and I like that better because yeah. that guy, the clown, yeah, the clown Freeman, he was around comedy a little bit. I mean, was he? Was like, he? So, yeah, he was around. I didn't know a little bit. Oh, interesting. I didn't know he was part of the posse. Uh, he wasn't part of the posse, right? Right. But he's he was on the periphery at. at, at, at what? It at, wasn't called. What did you call it on Monday nights? Eating it. I don't remember that. I thought it was like a. Uh, well, no, but there there was a there was maybe a, there was another show at was, Surf Reality. There was another show at the at the Collective Unconscious. I mean, a lot of people didn't know that it was called Eating yeah, It. Okay, maybe that's why. You know, it was just Monday night at Luna's. It was in, great. At Luna Lounge. You I, know can, I, mean? I still, I have such an image of you there, on you know, the mic, sweating, complaining. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See that? Now we get. That's why he didn't use me in the movie. See, <laughs> this guy just complains. I don't know if I don't think he can act. This guy's oh, a complainer. I just, I got to know Todd, so that's why I, I love Todd. I, yeah. I do not begrudge Todd anything. You know, I tried to put a tell in a movie too, who I love. I and, love a tell. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it didn't just didn't work out. at the time. Yeah. All right. So, so well, that that's I think that's interesting to me uh, that that you learned y- y- the basics of film editing yeah. in this documentary class just because yeah. the equipment was there. It was all there. And it, and, but it also, you know, you're not polluting your head with uh, with uh, lofty visions of uh, creative filmmakers. You're sort of on oh. your own. Yeah, and I, there was at that time there was no like path from an independent filmmaker to Spielberg or anything like. They, it didn't exist. But that, what are you seeing you know, that's making you compelled to do film? I mean, what you know, what turned I, you? I it was before it was kind of uh, it was before Slacker, which I think was a big influence on me when that came out. That that could that, be done, that, or that you liked the movie. I liked the movie, and also that it felt uh, you could feel the hand uh-huh. that you could see how it was made, sort of uh-huh. because it, what and it and it worked and yeah. it connected to a lot of people. Um, but you know. I, by the time I got to film school, like Il Mariachi was just getting made, and that was also another breakthrough. Uh, you know, so also, Rodriguez and, it, and uh, Linklater. No, I, I think before that though it was, you know, in high school, I walked, I went to the movie theater in Brooklyn at Kings Plaza. I don't know if you know Kings Plaza in Canarsie. Yeah. And uh, the movie I wanted to see was sold out, and there was a poster with a goofy looking guy with a Brooklyn hat on it. I said, "Let's go see that." And it turns out it was She's Got to Have It. Oh uh, yeah. And I had never seen anything like that. Yeah. I was just like, "What the hell?" I didn't know. That something like that could exist. So right, because you were used to I, mainstream movies. Yeah, right. That's all I grew up with. Yeah, that's, sure. It's the you know sure. we're we're, we're well, of but, this yeah. late seventies and eighties, yeah, right. and that's everything was those big you know early blockbusters, and so I saw that, and that sort of sent me. I discovered Jarmusch after that, and the kind of New York independent scene was like yeah. really exciting. So that was when you were in high school. I think, uh, yeah, probably like end of high school, or early college. That's a good time for it. Yeah, uh, but I always had a taste for that. My taste was always. Slightly off, but now yeah. when you, but like when you got into making film or when you were hanging around in Boston, yeah. did you pursue, uh, you know, because like there there's some elements of of Mother that are are specifically not American movies. Yeah, well, I definitely probably was influenced a lot by European and right know, Asian masters. Yeah, know? yeah, I mean, it, like, uh, yeah, because there's. There's a there's a the narrative is is broken up yeah. and and a lot of it is is insanely visual yeah. but not visual to in, in the in a way to distract or avoid right well <laughs> I guess that's a compliment no it is a compliment. oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> no I I mean you're utilizing you know film metaphor yeah yeah very intentionally mm-hmm. which uh, you know it's not spectacle in well a way. yeah well I like uh, one of the great things of film is that it could become a dream yeah you know. You don't have to be in a world of superheroes. You don't have to be in a real world. You can sort of follow characters through subjective thought. You know, yeah. it's like as we're hanging out here, we're making some eye contact, but oh. you're looking over there. You're thinking about Buster. There's lots of other things happening in our reality. I'm pretty focused. <laughs> I'm listening. You are. Yeah. But that's that's interesting that you can show how people's attention drift. And cinema is the only kind of art form that can let you sort of follow a character through their kind of personal experience. Yeah. So when you made Pi, it, yeah. what was your student film, though? Did you have to do a student film? I did do a student film. It was I called Supermarket Sweep. Yeah. Inspired by the uh, TV show. Remember Supermarket Sweep? 
The game you had show? to run in and buy? Yeah. You had a certain amount bring of time? In, which they bring him back. Of course. And you want to be my partner on the show? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember how the partnership works. How does it work? Uh, One guy runs, the other guy... Grabs the turkeys or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what you're offering me? Yeah, exactly. after all these exactly. years? Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go on Supermarket Sweep with we, Darren Aronofsky as be his partner. a great team. Yeah, I'm a, agreed. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm up for it. <laughs> Um, so you made that film. So I made, it was kind of like a weird. It was with Sean, the guy who starred in Pi, and he sort of just goes on. What's a, he up to? He's did a few other movies here and there. Yeah, and then he directed uh, a movie. He he moved. He fell in love and married a girl from Morocco. Lived in Tangier. Oh, what? Well, and I actually directed a film in Tangier, and now is trying to do his second film. So oh, that's he's, he's doing well. That's, that's okay. exotic and exciting. Yeah, very exciting. It was nice to go visit a like a good old friend living. In on Morocco, the, on the Mediterranean in Morocco, it's yeah. like all the it's like uh, it's like bowls and burrows, and very burrows, <laughs> very burrows. Like he, in fact, the first time I met Sean, he handed me a a copy of uh, Cities of the Red Knight, which That's is one of great Burroughs. one, great, it's the great. pirate one. Yeah, that, exactly. And I was started reading. I was like, "What, what the, the hell? What the hell is going on?" Still, I'm perplexed by it. That's it, pretty perplexing. But yeah. that, that trilogy, I, I I like a lot. That, yeah. that was the Western Lands, Place of Dead Roads, and City of the Red Knight. And the the great. Place of Dead Roads is a western. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's that one's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little. It's easy to follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a western. It's kind of a homoerotic western yeah. with occasional aliens and space action. <laughs> And a lot of talk of, uh, what of, was, of poisonous me, insects. Cities of Red Knight, it was a detective? No. No, Western, uh, no was that Pirates, wasn't it? Cities it was Pirates. Of Red, yeah, and then uh, Western Lands was the Book of the Dead. That was their, uh, the Egyptian one. Oh, really? Yeah. It's been a long time. But yeah. they were fun. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, naked yeah. lunch is he's, clear. He, he's funny. I mean, you know, he, Hilarious. he, he had bits. You it, know, he great. had bits. It was sad to lose him. Sure, but he lived a long time. He did live a long he time. He did all right, Bill. He did, he did all right. He did, and he, he had a nice comeback. I just, sure he did. I just uh, picked up, I, I tracked down that oh, documentary. Oh, Buster. Hey, Buster. Oh. oh. It, is, it is Buster. It Buster. is Buster. Wow, Buster. we found him. Hey, buddy. Come here. Oh. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Buster, come here. Buster, come here. Buster. Buster, come here. Buster. Come Cats. Here. Come here, buddy. You got him? <laughs> That's good. I spotted him. Oh, about to cry. What a fucking asshole. That cat's an asshole. <laughs> I'm about to cry. I tell you. Beautiful cat. Small though. He's a very smart cat and the thing is is like when they run off like that, there's nothing you can fucking do. Yeah. And he doesn't go, he's probably hiding for two days. Right, right, right. Freak okay, out. anyway, so where were we? Oh, Burroughs, uh, and right. then we went to, oh, I tracked down that documentary. There's a documentary called Burroughs. Oh, I haven't seen it's it. It's sort of hard to find. Okay. And it's pretty great. I think I got it on the Criterion Collection. I remember oh. seeing it at a screening in Boston, actually, in like the Copley, at the Copley Theater. Remember when they opened yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, complex yeah. down there? I do. So like, and I was like hung up on it. I think yeah. I think I, is, who directed it? was it? Kit Carson? I don't I don't remember uh, who who. But any was footage of him later. It was all throughout. Like uh -huh. it was a pretty thorough documentary. Oh, great. But I remember seeing him on SNL my freshman year of college and not oh, knowing wow. who the fuck he was. And I, I kept thinking like, this is the guy that wrote Tarzan. <laughs> like I like <laughs> oh that borrows right. So I was <laughs> I was just a dummy and I had yeah. a, this little set and he was reading from Naked Lunch, you know, Doctor Benway, oh, wow. Ships Doctor. And I'm like, what the fuck? And it blew my mind and that started a lot of everything. But uh, oh, so anyway, so you, you so the first film. Pie. I remember that was a that was a that was an exciting time. You were the new genius. <laughs> You're the genius of the Lower East Side. Uh. This guy who made this movie <laughs> for a little bit of money in black and white, and it's fucking trippy. Yeah. Do you remember the tags, the graffiti we stuck? Yeah, up I do zones? remember yeah. that. Of course, I was there. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "What the fuck is this pie business?" Uh, it was very cool. I, yeah. I hired a bunch of friends from Brooklyn. The street team. I, I told them twenty five bucks a can. Just take the stencils and put put it up everywhere. I had five guys one night, and we just bombed the city. Well, what can what what drove the? Why were you possessed with that story? Pie? Yeah, I don't know. It was a lot of things I was thinking about um, at the time. Um, you weren't you didn't were not brought up with a lot of religion. No. Okay. But uh, I just uh, there was just a I don't know. I I think I had a I actually had a math teacher in high school who taught all the sacred geometry. It was like an elective. Somehow I ended up in his class, and he he told all these mystical things about pi and 
how the Egyptians uh, had the ratio in their buildings, but then used a different one, a different... And so, like, yeah, a, so alongside cool. of the Joseph Campbell stuff and the Bible stuff, you're like, this is the missing piece. The mysticism. Yeah, it's all... The it's mysticism. All, I like, uh, you know, I like that stuff because I think people get lost in it. And yeah, it because, oh, yeah, you can magic. lose your mind in it. Yeah, it sounds And magic. that happened in the movie. <laughs> exactly. You, you know, it's like, you know, how far out can you drive your brain? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Which is fun. And, but but then, like, Requiem for a Dream was like, boom, we're in color. Yeah. We're moving the camera around. I'm yeah. a pro. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> Fuck you. Look what I can do. And I got movie stars. Yeah. So, you know, it was nice. You got movie stars. And Marlon was good. That was the first time it was sort of like, this guy can act. Yeah. He you know was what I mean? Surprised. I made him read, like, three, four times. Yeah. And uh, I think before he came in to see me, he, like, Stayed up for two days and, you know, didn't shower or something. And, oh, really? And he came in and just wiped out. And he, I thought he was great. And was that film. Jared's first movie, Jared Leto? No, he was already... Don't you remember? He was a TV guy. Oh, yeah. He was on that... Um, I don't, yeah, well, probably... Yeah. It was a kid thing, right? Yeah. The girls liked him. And, but I, I liked him. I thought he was great. And uh, Oh, he was great. Yeah, and he Burstyn was great. Burstyn and Jennifer, was great. like, was... That, yeah. She's always good. And what was that black dude's name? Oh, uh, Keith David. Yeah. <laughs> That's heavy shit, man. Uh, he was great. Yeah. <laughs> and Ellen burst and fucking amazing amazing kicked it just kicked like it. you know jacked 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 and just went for it and it was an amazing thing to see her do it's like every take she was just ripped and yeah it was great it was great and this cubby was uh hubert selby jr was there while we were shooting it and he's actually in the film he's uh the prison guard oh yeah, yeah. i gotta remember that yeah, yeah, yeah. so like and to have cubby on set amazing uh, well, I'd have him read a section of the book before, like when it was an to intense, the actors. Yeah, like before an actor would go, I have him do his like reading of the ch of the section, and it would, and then we'd be like, roll cameras, okay, let's action, and it was just an intense moment. I remember doing that when uh, Ellen was being electrocuted on the uh, during that scene. He oh, yeah, just, yeah, it was yeah. a really intense moment. Oh wow! Yeah, what did he think? How was the experience for him? It's funny uh, when he saw it the first time. He didn't really say much, but then at Cannes, when we premiered at the film festival, um, it was a reaction. I don't actually talk about it, but yeah. it was one of the great moments of my life. Well, let's talk about it. I can't. I don't talk. It's it's a thing. Too special? The you know what? When, Keep it personal? When Cubby died, there was a uh, memorial for him at the Egyptian in uh, on Hollywood Boulevard. And it's funny because everyone who spoke were people he helped with addiction. Jerry Stahl? A lot of guys yeah. were up there, and they all talked about it. And I remember my DP was there, Maddie, and I, I was like, I whispered to him, like, I'm not in recovery. What am I going to talk to him? You know, I feel. And <laughs> he's like, like he's like, he's like, meeting. he's like, that's a good reason that you should talk yeah. because you know, you 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 got he made your life in a different way. Yeah. So I went up there and I told that story and I said, this is the last time I'm going to tell this story. So I'm honoring that. But it was out of respect moment. for him. I think it's also out of res no. I don't think it's that. Although I have tremendous respect for him, it's because I think. Um, you want to keep it private. Keep it. I personal. think if you tell stories too much, yeah, they don't become yours anymore, and you forget the truth of them. You start. You you construct. Well, that's every interesting. Every time you tell a story, you construct it as a public personality, I, and you know that, and you know that sure. as a comedian. But I know that from material. talking to celebrities. That's yeah. what I know it from because they hone their material. Of course, yeah. And I, they I do, hone their public narrative, of course. And I do it on a press tour when I'm talking about the film. Sure, There's I know you said everything you know. we've said tonight. No, um. no, you're, you've actually gone a lot because you're just very loose. But, but uh, actually, I haven't actually had a chance to say anything. I haven't promoted Mother at all, but that's great. Um, but uh, you know, so certain stories, you, I feel like you keep private because otherwise, even though they're amazing, they just lose their energy and they become something different. That's like interesting. Further from the truth. Well, that's interesting. Is a guy that you know that that uh, you know barters in stories. Yeah. Well, here's a good one. Every time you tell a story, it becomes less true. How's that? What, is that yours? I don't know, but I'll take it. <laughs> it sounds familiar. So, but that's what I'm thinking right now. It becomes less true because of what you're saying. Because you, know what? you become might... you become more removed from the experience. It's actually not mine. It's Laurie Anderson's oh. from her film, the film she just did. You see this film no. about her dog dying? Oh no, she, I haven't seen her in years. She did a beautiful movie that's on HBO called um, "Some uh, Something of a Dog." Uh -huh. Can you look it up? Oh, right, sure. sure. Just so we could give it a plug. Yeah, it was really nice and beautiful and very poetic. But I think that's that was Laurie. Heart of a Dog. Heart of a Dog. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Well worth seeing. 
Oh, it's new, huh? Yeah, she did it maybe ninety eight percent Rotten Tomatoes. There you go. Wow. Yeah, it's very beautiful. It's kind of about I always liked her, her dog passing, but I think she's really talking about Lou. Yeah, I imagine. You know, he's. Only, I think he'd be honored. It, he'd be honored. <laughs> <laughs> he talks about being a dog several times in the songs. Yeah. Well, I mean, but I like the idea that 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 you know it loses, it, it becomes less true only because you become less connected to it. Yes, and also it abstracts because you start to embellish out, exactly, things. bend it. Well, what do you what hit do you, the punchline? But what do you think about memory in general? Is that something you fuck with? You mean no? Actively? I just mean no, 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 no. No, I mean like, uh, like I mean just you know that that why we remember, how we remember. You, you know, is that something that interests you in, in the same it. way that math does? I've yeah. got this memory I have that I remember. I was very young, and I was like, in I know exactly where I was in the car. I know exactly what I was looking like at looking at. It was a traffic light blinking, and I said to myself, "I'm going to remember this." for the rest of my life and it's funny when i start whenever i think about memory or someone starts talking about that triggers so it's weird what memory is and and what you decide to you know what falls into the memory yeah and you why know. you keep them yeah but i, I mean know. i could remember you performing on yeah. the lower east side and to be honest it, besides portnoy you might be the only one i remember really yeah interesting that stuck you know yeah, well, I mean, I guess there's an intensity, there are frequencies, you know, like, because yeah. like, my girlfriend asked me the other night, like, you know, what's your earliest memory? And I, I you know, like, I, I kind I kind of remember going to my grand grandparents' house when they lived in Jersey City, where my gra my father grew up. Yeah. I remember driving into the city from Bayonne, wow. you know, with my grandfather to get tongue at Katz's. <laughs> are you from Bayonne? <laughs> no. Oh. I, my, my family's from Jersey, but like, right. they, my, my father's parents lived in Jersey City when he was younger. Then they moved to Bayonne. They eventually moved to Asbury Park. Right. But like, but, the, but I was very young. Yeah. But I remember being, living in Wayne, New Jersey and getting hit in the eye with a can. You yeah. Know, I, you know, it's, we, I, I don't know. Like, there are bits and pieces of memory. Do you still have guy friends from back then? From, uh, when I was Childhood. that young? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, from New Mexico, from right. third grade, from Hebrew school. I got some, right. like, a couple of cats I know from Hebrew school. There's one oh. guy that I keep in touch with oh, from, nice. that I've known since third grade. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's odd. Yeah. Yeah. I have a whole posse of guys from, uh, from Manhattan Beach that, there's like six of us. We get together all the time. Yeah, and we met on tricycles. It's so nice. Cool. It's nice. They keep you grounded. Yeah, they do, and I don't have enough of them. Yeah, you know, and I've lived a lot of different places. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's the weird thing well, about. I'm kind of old school with you. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> you are. Yeah, but like New York was just a period. There was a yeah. Boston period. Yeah. I mean, you had a Boston period, but I was up there older. You know, yeah, yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. older, there was a San Francisco period. There was two LA periods. Wow, a lot of different places. Yeah, yeah. But all right, so I'm going to skip the two movies I didn't see, and let's just talk about the, the again with the with you the wrestler. You saw the wrestler, I did, of course, yeah, yeah. many times, many times, and I watch it again and again, and I go like, really, like uh, Todd and Judah, but uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they were both great. Yeah, they, they were did both good. great. Yeah. Mickey was great. Yeah. I don't uh, know if Judah minded. I cut off his head in the first scene, but it was on purpose. You did. It was about to make. It was about making it about the Ram. You know, and I so I purposely did sure. that, which is rude, but it was well, like reason. you know, I'm on a wrestling show now. Are like, you on Netflix? I'm on Glow, the gorgeous yeah, which I've, of I've seen the yeah. whole season. It's a great show. I yeah. really enjoyed it. It's fun, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. in deep in its own way. Uh, very meaningful, very sad. Yeah. Very your character is very. It's great. Your character is hilarious, <laughs> and you're to great, convincing. Because a lot of comedians yeah. can't make that step. Yeah. I find, yeah, but because I think certain comedy is just it's. You just have to. Right. You're delivering. A, you're a yeah, speech maker. You're right, an orator, right, right, right. orator, or what? Or, or, order, order. order. Yeah. You know, but acting has yeah. twists and turns, and you have to find quiet. You have to find loud. Different yeah. voices. I think. So, no, I think you're right, and you got to be open. Yes. Yes. Well, I appreciate that. But so, what? You know, to do the actor. You were saying wrestler. The, the wrestler. Wrestlers, yeah. You know, to be, you know, but I've talked to a lot of wrestlers. Yeah. You know, over time on yeah. this show. Yeah. And I've grown to appreciate wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As an entertainment yeah. and as a physically. Uh, draining and uh uh you know insane skill but i yeah. watched the wrestler again recently thank you uh, and i love it and i just like why that movie though like what was it that that compelled you towards that when i was 13 i got into you were a wrestling kid yeah for a year it was like uh, <laughs> it was a year, like a year. hulk hogan was a bad guy yeah. uh Balaban, what, what was not Balaban? That's not Bob Bal Bob Bob ba Backlund. I'd Brad love to Franklin? see Bob Balaban. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> It'd be great. Uh, anyway, I can't remember the names of all the wrestlers yeah. back then, but the Samoans, all that shit. Yeah. 
So I I loved it and uh, for a year, um, and I always thought there's got to be a world there. Uh, there's been a million boxing movies, yeah, and there hasn't been a serious wrestling movie ever, yeah. And there has to be a world there because there's so many people that give their lives to it. So for a long time, I had this project in my notes yeah. about doing something on a wrestler, and then eventually I started to meet some of the old guys that I grew up. Uh, you know, idolizing, you know, uh, you, uh, Lou Albano I met sure. and, and uh, um, uh, I can't remember their names. I'm spacing right now. But Mick Foley? I never, I did talk to Mick. but I, Jake was, the Snake? He was, I never met Jake, but Mick Foley was later. Yeah. You know, but he was interesting because he's all about the pain and yeah. uh, doing crazy shit to his body. Oh, yeah. And, and he can barely walk now. Barely. He, <laughs> I, met, I lived uh, one flight up and getting him up uh, that flight of steps to my Sweet house. Sweet guy. Very yes. nice guy. Very well, nice guy. Yeah. Uh, but messed up and brilliant, really smart guy. Well, it seems like, you know, that there was a little bit of, like, that spirit in that guy that R Mickey O'Rourke fights at yeah. the end. Yeah. De oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. You're talking about halfway through the guy with the staple gun? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that that was a real wrestling promotion. I mean, the idea was always to stick Mickey Rourke into real wrestling situations with real wrestlers and let and let the fun begin. Yeah. And so that there was this super hardcore wrestling that was all about blood and bleeding and, and, and you know, kind of torture. of and, It's real. Totally real. It's like real. a... Like a and, and, I mean... It's the, own circuit. The audience circuit. knows it's fake. Yeah. But they know the pain is real. Right. So they are, you know, when the guy jumps off a super high ladder, they yeah. start chanting, you're so dead. You're so dead. Yeah. You're, and that just, I saw this event. So, the, yeah, the blood and, and guts stuff. The blood and guts. And I was just, this is this is a world. This is a world. Oh, oh so that drew you in. Because I remember, like, those yeah. wrestling magazines when I was a kid. I didn't go in for wrestling, but they yeah. were always just guys in unitards with blood all oh, over. Oh, yeah, them. exactly. And, and it, we used to love it when they would bleed. That was, yeah. like, the thing for some reason. But it was real blood, no? Yeah, they basically uh, take a little piece of razor blade. Like, we show yeah. the whole oh, thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And they, yeah. they take an aspirin beforehand so that they're in the blood they're, out. In the blood out and then they all they do is a little slice a so little tiny razor slice and they get it in the sweat and the blood and, and after a few seconds of it it's just pouring out of them yeah and that's you know? the that's the entertainment that they're like that's well just like the you believe i guess it's somehow like it's like people sort of in the back of their heads knew it was violent but then when you see blood how could that be fake you know I think I, it's yeah, just part it's, of the magic trick. But, of right, it, that's right. That the spectacle know? of it. Yeah. And, and the awareness of that. Well, now did you did was that before Beyond the Mat? Did you see Beyond the Mat about Jake the Snake? I think it came out later. Barry what's no, his I name think, documentary? I, I think it was simultaneous oh, while yeah? we were doing it. And I think uh elements of Jake's you know, in, in that documentary came through a little uh -huh, bit. Uh huh. But, but uh, like it's brutal, man. The drugs, the yeah. you know what they put them through, and the fact that there are these circuits that not unlike comedy, where you're playing B rooms. Yeah, you're literally you know trying to make you know, make a, yeah. a little bit of the door, a little bit of cut. Like a, a lot of these guys do it just for just like comedians do for stay alive. Uh, not just that, but they'll go and do an empty room just to right. you know to get up and do it, just to get up and do it. And oh that's my it. god! But these guys are not just hurting their vocal cords; they're they're actually doing physical shit that hurts. I know it, it was, and he was genius. He did a great job. Well, Mickey's always been genius. Yeah, it was just about capturing him in the right. At that role. time, what was he yeah. like about it? What was your relationship with I, him? I think he looked at me like medicine. He knew I tasted bad, but he knew it was good for you for him. You know, it was that type of thing. <laughs> like every time he'd be like, "All right, what do you want now?" But he knew we were doing something special, and and he was very much like an old um, an old biplane. You, to get the propeller going, you had to keep going. <laughs> 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 And then as soon as it started purring, it was just beautiful. It's just like, you know, like a Rolls-Royce <laughs> engine. It just took a while to get going. <laughs> yeah, Mickey Rourke, the old biplane. Yeah. And then you go from that to Black Swan, which is about another physically taxing, kind yeah. of brutally you know, harsh and sad on different levels. Yeah. And so meticulous. You're very meticulous. Everything was very refined. The the comparison of the two, which are are somewhat similar in the intensity of, of how hard they are on themselves. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the body as art. Right, but yet you know the you know, just the mess yeah. of wrestling compared to the the anal control <laughs> freakishness of, of ballet of yeah. ballet, yeah, high art and low art, but I guess that's been said before, yeah, yeah. so that's a good double feature, yeah, definitely, definitely, but like what in black swan what what drew you into that world? I mean, you knew that was a world, yes, my right, how you handled it. my sister was a dancer yeah. when I was a kid, but you know, I was into little league. 
but she had the posters and she went she was a serious ballerina all the way through high school yeah and so i thought that there was a world there and once again i was like very similar to wrestling i was like there's something there People love it. It's been going on for a yeah, very long time. Yeah, and all the little time. girls. There's like, isn't there like anorexia there and just like there's so much stuff. There's so much stuff to get. You know, that's really tough. Um, and you got a lot of it. We tried to touch a bunch. Yeah, and and she won the Oscar, right? She did. That was exciting. Definitely. It was a good Have time. you won an Oscar? I've been nominated for which one? Black Swan. Oh damn, man. Yeah. yeah. Is that something that's important to you? I mean, it's. It's funny. I remember as it was happening, the whole thing, you realize it's a golden statue. It's like a golden man. It's like it's You want of, the prize, though, you know? Look, it helps the work. Awards help the okay. work. Okay. And so it makes sense, especially when you do weird films, yeah. to get <clears> – <throat> it's it's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's great. And I mean, look, I, I've won big awards, so, you know um, – and it's the wrestler won the Venice Film Festival. And it was an amazing thing for the film because it really got it going, and right. people started. Take, we were really nothing when we went to the Venice Film Festival. Yeah. We were the last film, and we weren't even the closing night film. They, even though we were the last film, they didn't give us the slot of closing night. We were yeah. just the last film. Right. And then we got that big prize, and that really helped us sell it. And then it propelled it all the way to the Globes and to the Oscars and all that stuff. So, and that just raises the awareness because there's so many articles written about it. It, for that reason, so that's, I mean, that's that's what's important. I think I think though those prizes can screw you up, and the yeah, important thing, you know, I guess and, so. And the th important thing is to stay grounded and remember you gotta you gotta work hard. But you're one of those guys though. You mix it up. You know what I mean? You know, you do a lot of different kinds of movies. Do I? I think so. Some people say it's all the same movie. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> I've gotten that. I don't know. You, you can tell me Noah and the Wrestler are the same movie. I agree. You can tell me Black Swan and Mother are the same movie. No. You can tell me that. You can tell me that, Darren. <laughs> you can look me in the eye. You can say that to me. Oh. No, but like, what's your relationship like? Because I, I see that you do a lot of producing, yeah. and that's a whole other world. Yeah. What, how, how do you approach that? How did you get involved with the fighter, for instance? I don't know why I want to talk about David O. Russell, but you guys yeah. are friends, or are you yeah. not friends? Yeah. Well, uh, just recently, we become much closer because he really supported mother. He really dug it, and and it seems really he's, kind he's another it. guy that does a lot of odd movies. Definitely, he's and I, I when he did Spanking the Monkey, and I was a student, he, that was one of the films that I was like, oh, this is great, and it was very inspiring. And oh. to see his career, how he did it, was great. I've too. never seen that. Fuck that guy. You know how that yeah. unfolded was unbelievable which one spanking the monkey yeah that yeah. you know it was like oh that could happen yeah 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 and then the, the other one with uh ben stiller and the oh LSD, yeah, yeah. Uh, disaster for yeah disaster. yeah that was great great you know? ensemble yeah. comedy yeah, yeah, yeah. and then huckabee is it's like what yeah <laughs> i like it yeah me too i love it <laughs> wacky you yeah know? it's like an ianesco play complete yeah, absurdity yeah. it was great and so i don't know but uh, so yeah. how'd you get involved with the fighter i actually was on it before him yeah. and i brought on the writer and i I think I brought on Christian Bell, and I have it. I think I think um, Mark Wahlberg. Was it was your attached. idea. No, 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 no. It was uh, an you idea were brought to it. me. Yeah, and I was developing. Oh, it. I and get then it. I had just finished the wrestler, and I was kind of sick of the smell of Bengay. <laughs> you know, I was <laughs> like, fighting. I got to go to ballet. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather you know yeah, smell uh, powder. It smell <laughs> something different. Yeah, because like chalk. It, it was a lot of sweaty, you Dudes. know, sweaty locker rooms when How'd I did the wrestler. How'd you feel like he did with the movie? thought it was great it was great right i think he brought a humor to it that i never saw you know and and he had his wacky interesting kind of, you know thing that i i wasn't thinking about i think i was i was looking at a sports drama i mean breaking away is one of my favorite films you know the yeah, bike movie sure. and uh oh, I, yeah. I love that genre i love you know oh when dennis uh, quaid uh, can't breathe anymore oh, when dude, he... it's great yeah it's great great and the kid goes across the i just watched it uh a couple of weeks ago. Oh, no kidding. Still, still cry oh, when yeah. he crosses the finish line. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, Rudy, another this... great one. So, but but as a producer, like Jackie, too, that seems, no. like, uh, that seems like a movie that you could have made as well. I was going to do it for a while, too. That's why I had it. I, I got oh, So that's it. how these producer things happened, that you were Not attached? All of them. Not all of them, but uh, uh, some of them, yeah. I, sometimes we develop a project, and uh, I kind of 
don't feel it enough. And I and then I was lucky to find Pablo Lorraine who did Jackie and did a beautiful job. With How'd it. you feel about it? Oh, you liked it? I thought it was great. I did too. It was great. It was. I really did. I just talked to Greta Gerwig today. Oh, great. She I'm, was. She signed this. Yeah, oh, just yeah. a few hours ago. Oh, very nice. Yeah, it's very been nice. a it's been a big day. Okay. So now, is there anything I can do for you? Do you feel like this conversation went well? Are you disappointed in any way? Well, what you could do... I'm going to watch the rest of the You movie. could pause it. You could watch the movie. And then you could add to the end of this, even though I'm not here, and then just say what you think about it. And then I could hear it when I listen to it. How's okay. That? How's that? Is that a deal? That's a that deal. That means you actually have to watch the end of it. No, I'm going to. And, okay. uh, and, and here's the other... I promise you it's the best thing I've ever done. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, now I just feel awful because I tried, man. I tried to get it done. I know. No, you're a busy guy. I tried to get it done. I just I got it. a link, and then the link didn't work. Okay. And then we had to, like, I had to get another link no, at no, 1230 no this afternoon. No worries. And then Greta came over, there and then go. I'm watching it in the house, and then I'm worried about other shit. And you the know, cat was missing. The cat was missing. Okay, but I'll do that for you. That's good. That's and, what you uh, and And I'll, 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 I'll honor that. I'll say goodbye to you. Okay. And, then, and, in, and in this place... I'm telling my producer, I will I will talk about the end okay, of good. Mother. Okay, good. And then I'll listen and uh, and we'll see if uh, if, if I get it. Like, yeah. well, no, you no, gave me insight it, and you it, didn't spoil anything for anybody. No, no. Exactly. Because there was always the outside chance that if I did watch it, this is how I'm going to get wheeze and worm out of this. Yeah. If I had watched it. It's not working. It, <laughs> we might have ruined it. Mark, pleasure. Nice seeing you. Nice talking to you. Absolutely. Okay, that was me and Darren Aronofsky, and I and I have to admit, in the name of transparency, I have to admit, I promised him I'd watch the end. I did not watch it. I don't know if it was you know subconsciously because I just didn't think I could handle it. I didn't know whether or not in my mind that I had seen enough. Maybe I'm afraid of it. Maybe I just forgot. Maybe I just forgot to watch it. Maybe I'm I'm. Maybe the allegory was too much for me already. Maybe I maybe reality in my life is is intense enough to where the uh, the constant onslaught of of what was happening in that film it, it was was too much for me. But either way, uh, I I still like the as the, as much as I watched, and I will watch the rest later. I swear I will. I just it's, I've been busy, and it's a lot. It's a lot, right? And I don't know what my life will be like if I watch the end of that movie. It could change everything. It could change everything. So, movies have that kind of power, you know. You never look at anything the same way. Maybe that's what I'm afraid of. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's so deep and so good and so confrontational that I'm afraid of changing my life forever. And I will confront that fear. I will, Darren, if you're listening still. I will. I will confront that fear. But that's where I'm at with it. It's like my Everest. You know what? It, let's what, let's spin it like this. In it, this is the best of all possible situations because there's no fucking spoilers because I didn't see the end of the movie. Yeah, that's how I'm going to do it. I, you know what? I, I didn't I, I didn't I didn't want you to end on purpose because I, I didn't want to even be tempted to spoil the movie for you. Although it does seem like one of those kind of movies where there are no spoilers because it's hard to wrap your brain around to begin with, but. No spoilers. That was my choice. Uh, and don't forget, Sonos One blends great sound with Amazon Alexa, the easy-to-use voice service for hands-free control of your music and more. Sonos speakers already sound great, but now you can control your entire Sonos system with your voice. Even manage your smart devices with Sonos One. And now, for a limited time, Sonos is offering 10% off one order of $2,500 or less for any product on Sonos.com. Just use the promo code WTF10. That's capital WTF10 at Sonos. Dot com. Gratitude, man. Gratitude and 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 fear. <laughs> Everything's mixed. There's always a blend. Always a blend. It's never it's never so clear. It's never so it's never so one thing. There's always a little bit of a mix going on. I'm gonna play a little guitar and get out of here. Wow, 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 wow,
Boomer lives! <laughs>